Today we're going to be going through my top three in every single makeup category. I haven't 100% transitioned to cruelty free and vegan makeup, but everything that I'm going to be talking about is cruelty free and everything will be linked down below in the description box per usual. Starting with primers. I'm actually not a primer person. The Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer, you get a bunch of product in this. It's 1.5, two ounces, and you will probably not go through this. So it has this like jelly, dimethicone, silicone-y type of texture to it. For context, I have dry, acne-prone skin. I do have some texture, some healing acne scars, a couple of active bumps right now, and this does a great job of smoothing my canvas. This really does make your makeup last all day long. Like, it will look just like this, like eight to 10 hours later, so. Another one that I don't have, I used to use this all the time back in college a couple years ago, and this is magic in a bottle. It's the Too Faced Hangover Replenishing Face Primer, and one, this smells so good. It basically just feels like a normal face moisturizer, but if you're hungover, <laughs> if you're tired, if you've been drinking, not sleeping enough, like whatever it is, something about this product will really just liven up your face again. You'll look plump again, glowy. Moving on to eye primers. I've got, I've talked your ear off about this one. If you've watched any of my makeup videos, this is always in the description. It's the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. This is an old packaging. They actually have it in um, like a little, tube that has a doe foot wand. So you apply it with the doe foot wand with the new version. As long as you set this with a skin toned eyeshadow or a setting powder, your eyeshadow will remain like just as pigmented. It won't fade. Like this is a tried and true for me. And I have a drugstore alternative. This is my favorite eye primer. Like if I could only keep one, I honestly would choose this one over the Too Faced one and mostly because it does cancel out the discoloration, any redness, any veins on your eyelid and that is the Milani Eye Primer. Also a plus because this is $8 I believe. Moving on to foundations slash skin tints. So the first one is the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. I've spoken about this before and I have it in the shade MG5. Uh, one critique about this product that has nothing to do with the formula, but the shades are weird in this range. Um, and what I mean by that is I feel like the shades are not labeled correctly slash the swatches online like it's extremely difficult to buy this product online because when you look at the swatches they just don't make sense and when you apply this it just feels so creamy and once you blend it out like it literally feels like nothing like my face feels like how it would if i wasn't wearing any makeup that's what I love about this one and the next one I'm going to be talking about. And this one has medium coverage. You can build it up to full. So it's a very buildable foundation, which I really love. The wear time is amazing. Really the only areas that this will wear off or get a little weird is around the nose, like in this area with the smile lines. And the next foundation, it is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. And this comes in dewy finishes and matte finishes. I'm a dry gal, I love a glow, obviously. So I got the dewy version and this is in the shade Golden Beige, which is a little bit too light for me. This is definitely more of my winter shade, but they didn't have the correct shade for me to wear right now while I'm very tan. So I actually mixed two of, uh, I mixed both of these today to get this shade match. What I like about this one is how it feels so thin. It's just like the LYS one where it's medium, you can build it up to full coverage. It makes your skin look super smooth. Like this one is really good 
over any kind of texture, if you have acne bumps, if you have any kind of scarring. And last but not least, I think more than the LYS one, I would say if I could choose any out of the three of these, it would be my M Cosmetics Day Cushion Tinted SPF in the shade Sweet Secret and comes in a cushion and it does come with a refill. So this one is the refill that I put in not too long ago, but with the original and the refill, this will last you like a good year. It really looks like nothing on your skin. It really does look like your skin and it wears really well. It fades away more so than these foundations. That's just the nature of a skin tint. It wears away a little bit quicker, but it's so natural that it's never an issue. Like it's not noticeable. Moving on to one of my favorite makeup categories, concealer. Starting off with an oldie but a goodie is the Josie Marin Vibrancy Argan Oil Full Coverage Concealer Fluid. It looks like this. The finish of this is really creamy. Like it feels really creamy, really hydrating. If you have dry under eyes, if you want a more dewy satin looking concealer, look no further. A drugstore alternative, the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I have several shades, but the one that matches me the best is Medium Peach. The thing about this one, it does oxidize. Another downside is this is not the most buildable, at least for my under eyes. When I tried to build this one up, it does get a little patchy and cakey, but you really don't need that much. This is full coverage. What I love about this one is that it sets itself. You don't necessarily need to use powder. It's full coverage. It blends out just so easily, so quickly, and it's only like $6. This next one would 100% be my go-to. This is my favorite concealer of all time. I like, there's literally no other concealer that can really come close. The Josie Marin one is similar, but these Kosas Revealer Concealers are it. These ones don't dry quickly, so I still have time to blend them out. They're medium, but you can definitely build them up. This is a very buildable concealer. You can get full coverage with this, but the finish of this is... The finish and the wearability of this is what makes this my favorite concealer. My under eyes love to crease. My under eyes love to move product around. They love to get crepey and make product bunch up in weird ways. And that's why most concealers do not work for me. But this one moves with your skin. It sinks into the skin. It never looks cakey or bunches up or changes its texture. It just really stays dewy and fresh and creamy all day. And this one is great. If you want to set it, it works well with powder. I just could not say enough good things. Like this is the concealer that I've been waiting for, the concealer that is the most reliable for me and my under eye problems. Moving on to powder. This is the e.l.f. High Definition Powder in the shade Sheer. And it used to come in this little pot. It's so lightweight, like when they say high definition, this is such a finely milled powder that if you're not careful, it will literally just blow off your brush. Like it's so lightweight and it doesn't leave a white cast. It really does set your concealer to where it's smooth and flawless and it's never cakey or heavy. The other loose powder that is my favorite is the Too Faced Ethereal Born This Way setting powder. I said that backwards I think but the ethereal setting powder from Too Faced that one is the setting powder of your dreams especially if you're an oily gal if you're an oily gal that one is for you you really don't need much because this is definitely like a more dry powder so you can bake with this if you're oily use it to set it all over the face i wouldn't necessarily use it to set my face because it is so dry that it wouldn't work with my skin type but if you need those creases gone that one is the one now as far as pressed powder goes my number one pick out of all three that i'm going to talk about is the elf 
Prime and Stay Finishing Powder. This is in the shade Medium Light. This one is just lightweight enough. It's smooth. It works really well underneath the eyes. That's my favorite part about this is that for the under eye, if I'm going to set my under eyes, this is my go-to because it's not going to make the texture weird. It's just going to make my concealer stay in place and look just as flawless, as smooth as the original application. The next two pressed powder products are actually in palettes, but the first one is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contouring Palettes. That one is so creamy, so smooth. It's very similar to the e.l.f. one as far as the texture goes, but that one is really good for brightening if that is something that you're looking for. The next is also a contour palette, but this one is from e.l.f. and specifically that yellow shade like i remember in high school i went through like two or three of those palettes and always hit pan on that yellow shade even more so than the wet and wild one like that color is perfect for my skin tone honestly think that people lighter and darker than me can get away with it it's definitely the thinnest out of the elf one and the wet and wild one it's super thin moving on to bronzer slash contour so my first product i featured in a couple of my recent videos is the patrick ta what is it the cream contour and powder bronzer duo and this is in the shade she's sculpted so you have a cream contour here it has a little window which is really nice and then the powder bronzer on the top and a nice big mirror the packaging is really nice feels really luxurious it's definitely more of a high-end mid-range product definitely not drugstore just letting you know off the bat but this is so good like this is the only bronzer slash contour i've been wearing for weeks ever since i got this i haven't been able to put it down i love it because this is super buildable it's not too pigmented and you can layer them in different ways you can put the cream on first then the powder actually patrick ta recommends putting the powder on first and then the cream and surprisingly it works like they're just so easy to blend the finish is like a satin finish for the cream and the bronzer isn't a flat bronzer it does have like a little bit of dimension to it which i prefer i don't really like flat matte bronzers i do have dry skin so i just normally go for like a glowier look anyways the next one that i do not have but i adore this shade is fenty beauty's amber contour i've had the stick before but a whole bunch of skin tones can use fenty beauty's amber and i love this because it really does create a shadow it doesn't look gray it just really looks like natural shadows that will show on your face and this one blends into a powdery finish so if you're an oily gal i think you'll really like this even if you're wary of cream products the fenty beauty sticks in general are really good for oily skin because they do set and become a powdery texture last but not least is an iconic product the physician's formula butter bronzer this is such a nice bronzer i just really wish that they had like five more shades specifically deep dark shades that beachy coconutty sunscreen sweet salty scent is intoxicating and this is a satin bronzer it's not heavy at all like this is definitely more suited to natural makeup loving girlies someone who is trying to get into bronzer and want something that is buildable and easy to use look no further for the butter bronzers next is another one of my favorite categories which is blush oh my gosh i love blush it's so funny because i'm actually not wearing blush for once in this video but normally i'm wearing blush like every single day and my absolute favorite blushes of all time are the rare beauty soft pinch liquid blushes i currently have encourage and hope and i used to have uh joy too i don't know where she ran off to i'm really upset because that one's like a beautiful red like sunburnt shade you really only need like 
just the tiniest little drop, like not even a full drop to cover your whole face. Just the colors, beautiful, literally lasts all day. Like these do not fade, which I love. If you're an oily gal, you'll still love these because they do set down, but they do give you enough play time to fully blend out these blushes. And my second favorite blush of all time, I've been wearing this one so, so much, almost every single time I've done my makeup, is the Undone Beauty Lip to Cheek Palette in the shade Rosewood. This is really cool because there's actually three different sections going from least pigmented to most pigmented least pigmented to most pigmented and you can use these on the lips not really a big fan of how this applies on the lips but on the cheeks this is so beautiful so creamy so juicy like you just look like a freshly picked orange when you wear this oh my gosh do i love these highlighters and actually i had a hard time finding three highlighters. I'm actually more picky about highlighter than I thought. An option from the drugstore, one that I've talked about before, ColourPop Flexitarian. I'll do a little swatchy poo for you. I've used this on tan deep skin tones and it does not look ashy. It's, ooh, it doesn't have as pigmented of a base that I think like a lot of skin tones could get away with this. It's extremely transparent like when you're looking straight ahead you don't see it it's really only when your head's turning that it catches the light and it's just so incredibly blinding next is my favorite highlighter of all time cream liquid powder the light lock fluids from about face you could never go through a full thing of this and there is 0.5 fluid oh hell no 0.5 fluid ounces this will last you like 30 to life for real I have the shade Shaken or Stirred. And the next one is the shade Fight or Flight. This one is more pinky. So that one is Fight or Flight. Oh, they are just so reflective. And these work best if you blend them out with your finger. Uh, they just give you like the most blinding, gleaming finish. Like that's the kind of highlighter that I want. If I'm going to wear highlighter, I want it to be shocking. I want you to see it from space. I want the UFOs to be signaled as I'm turning my head. Moving on to powder highlight. I actually only have two and one of them, I'm so, so glad that it's still available. It's the Smashbox X Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector. Specifically, the Shane Moonstone is perfect for my skin tone. The Becca highlights are iconic. They blend like so well into the skin, like just look kind of similar to this highlight that I'm going to talk about in just a second, but similar to this kind of finish where they just look creamy and I want to say milky for some reason. That's not a very good descriptor, but <laughs> they're just so creamy and blinding. Not really blinding like these are, but just a glow, like a true glow from within. That's what the Becca Shimmering Perfectors provide. And then the other highlight is the one that I'm wearing today, and it is the Rem Beauty Highlighter Topper. I don't know what they mean by highlighter topper. Um, this is just a highlight basically, and this is in the shade Miss Mercury. And this one is perfect for my skin tone. This one is a creamy powder. Like the way that this applies is unlike any highlighter um, that I've ever tried. I also really like the packaging. It's got the magnetized closure and a nice mirror in here but you really don't need a lot of time to blend this even though it's a powder like you can literally just take your brush and do this kind of motion and you're good like you really don't need to work this one in to the skin as much really invisible undetectable on the skin but just has I mean 
Moving on to eyebrows. The first favorite is something I've talked about again and again. <laughs> it's like the only brow product I use and it's the Milani Weekend Brown. This is in the shade Espresso. It comes in a pen. I love an eyebrow pen. I don't think I'll ever go back to pencils. Pomades are just like a no. Powders are just a no for me. Like I don't like how they look. The more pressure you put on it, obviously, uh, the darker it will be, but some of these strokes are pretty light. I love this one because it's so long lasting. Like even when I'm taking my makeup off, like sometimes it's a little hard to take off. The hair like strokes that it creates are so natural, really easy to work with. And the other product that I love and I don't have right now, is the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel. I was using the shade Dark Brown, which was a little bit too light for me. Um, so I have to get like the soft black or the darkest shade, but that one has a really good hold and the fibers really add volume and bushiness and texture to your brows to make like a fluffy brow. Like if you're into a fluffy brow, you'll love that Brow Boss Gel. Moving on to eyeshadow. Starting off with cream slash liquid eyeshadows. The first are the ColourPop Super Shock eyeshadows. I have a couple of different shades, uh, specifically the shades Frog and Ritz are my favorite. Uh, so this is Ritz and then this one is Frog. They're creamy, but they don't move around, they don't slip around, they don't crease. Even if you're not wearing an eye primer, like they just move well with like your eyelid. Next cream eyeshadow are the Tarte Chrome Paints. I have the shade Beach Bay and Sun Drenched. These ones, like the ColourPop ones, are super reflective and shiny, but honestly, these are the most reflective eyeshadows I have ever tried. And you really only, I mean, even in the pot, like, I mean, that is just, oh, like so much fun to play with. Super sparkly, super shiny. Lastly, for the cream liquid category are the About Faced Fluid Eye Paints. These are my favorite liquid eyeshadows that I've tried. These are where it's at. There's a bunch of colors. These are super pigmented. And what I like about these is that you can mix them up. They layer over top one another really well. Uh, they layer on top of the same color really well. And the playtime with these is like at least 15 seconds, like 15 to 30 seconds. I really like the packaging. I like, like that sound is very satisfying, very like ASMR. These ones inspire me to be creative, to be artistic. That's really like the whole premise of About Face in general. So they really killed it with these. So, so many fun colors that I want to try. The next category of eyeshadows are small palettes slash trio slash quads. And I only have two in this category. And the first is an eyeshadow quad, and I am actually wearing it as um, a little bit of crease work today. And it is the e.l.f. bite-sized eyeshadow palette and I Love You A Latte. And this one is the only all matte one that they have. They're pigmented, smooth, they blend so easily, blend with each other so easily. I love this cream shade for a matte, inner corner highlight or to set my eye primer. This is really, really good. And this is three doll hairs. It's just perfect. Like it's literally perfect in every single way. I adore this little palette. And the only other small eyeshadow palette I've talked about before is the Going Coconuts palette from ColourPop. This is one of their nine pan eyeshadow palettes in the plastic packaging. So if you're just looking for a tried and true neutral palette, and this is only like $9, or I think on the website it might be $12, but still it's such a good deal. It does come with a mirror. And I've gotten so much practical use out of this palette. Moving on to another favorite palette of mine, which is the ABH Soft Glam Palette. This is so iconic. This really has such 
a great range of neutral tones. It's definitely more leaning on a warm tone palette with some really pretty gold shimmers. The only thing I will say if you're interested in the ABH formula is this is like the most powdery eyeshadow formula. And what I mean by that is if I were to place my brush in here, even if I was just lightly tapping, there is a lot of kick up. There's gonna be a lot of powder that spews out of the pan. And these shimmers, really soft, really easy to work with. And they're definitely uh, shimmers, these are not glitters. So I only have two in the full size palette category, the Soft Glam palette, and then the Lunar Beauty Nude Prism palette. I've said before, this is the most beautiful packaging on any makeup product that I've ever seen. Like, oh my God, like Manny really killed it with this one. It does come with a nice big mirror and it's a super pretty pinky neutral palette. There's a lot a variety in this one. This one's definitely a buildable eyeshadow formula. This is less pigmented and powdery than the ABH Soft Glam. Soft Glam, you can get like full pigment from the get-go. This one is more buildable. You do have to go in a couple of times and there is a little bit of kick up, but it's really not anything close to the ABH one. It's very minimal. These shimmer textures are so interesting because when you touch them, they feel almost dry. Yeah, so they, they honestly feel more like toppers. This palette makes me feel like so girly and you can do so much with this palette, like a light flirty look or really go into some of these darker looks and do like a vampy look. Moving on to eyeliners, starting off with liquid eyeliners. I have the NYX Epic Ink Liner. This is my second one that I've had. I love this one. This is such an easy eyeliner pen to use. Like the tip is so fine, so easy to work with. This doesn't drag at all. The only thing about this one, with this eyeliner in this area, that's always the first to go. Like after like five hours, it does smudge a little bit. And so the solution to that is just if you really want this to wear like eight to 10 hours without having a little bit of smudging on the outer corner or wherever you're putting it, then definitely set it with a black eyeshadow and you'll be fine. This next eyeliner is my favorite eyeliner of all time. It's iconic. It's the KVD Tattoo Liner. And I haven't actually tried the black one, at least I don't think I have, but this is the brown one in Mad Max Brown. When I tell you, this is the most matte, the most long wearing, most budge proof, most waterproof, sweat proof. Like this is not going anywhere. So this is the color Mad Max Brown. And the brush tip is super thin, glides on super easily. And the wearability of this one is truly unmatched. Moving on to pencil eyeliners, starting off with this one is the ColourPop Cream Gel Eyeliner in the shade Honey Dude. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> the biggest con to this one is that they're so creamy that they tend to break like a little, a little bit just uh, broke off there, unfortunately. So that's the shade Honey Dude. I've been looking for a long wearing nude eyeliner for years because another one that I'm gonna talk about wasn't cruelty free until recently. So I had to find a different one and this is the next best thing to the other one I'm gonna tell you about. This one is creamy, like these do not tug your eye at all. You don't need to tug your eye to get the pigment and they last like a pretty good long while. I wouldn't say a full eight hours. I would say you're gonna get a good five hours wear of this before you would need to touch it up or notice that it's starting to fade away. And the next one, which is the one that was not cruelty free for the longest time, is the Rimmel Scandalized Waterproof Gel Pencil in the nude shade. That one is better than the ColourPop one. Like that one, like the Rimmel Scandalized is iconic. That eyeliner is not moving. Like that truly is 
a solid straight eight hour wear and it is waterproof like you could cry be wiping your eyes like whatever it is that you're doing like that one truly stays in your waterline i am so excited to repurchase that one and so glad the rimmel is finally cruelty free and lastly i have a black eye pencil and this is from tristique this is the tristique line sharpen and smudge eye pencil in the shade santorini black sand this is the best eyeliner to use for smudging it's super black super budge proof oh super creamy too so that's the shade santorini black sand here's your smudger and then you pull it again and there's your sharpener like this one this product is just so easy to move moving on to lips this is a big category so grab a snack is starting off with lipstick the first one is the Merit signature lip lightweight lipstick in the shade baby Ooh, there's a little of course there's a cat hair on it um this is what it looks like the packaging is super luxe super pretty the thing i like about this one is that this really clings to your lips like you can feel that it's gonna stay a long time overall this is just a reliable lipstick like it's not gonna move or smudge at all even if you eat and it's not the most long wearing you'll probably get like a good six hours wear out of this moving on to the bite beauty power move soft matte lipsticks these smell like the mac lipsticks not as strong of a scent but it's basically the same scent like a vanilla sugary ah uh, so good i really like these because they make your lips look velvety matte like like photoshopped like you have no lines on your lips kind of texture but my favorite shade is sugar buns they're super pigmented super creamy that was like off of two swipes i'm actually wearing um the shade chai on my lips today paired with a fenty beauty gloss but and my favorite lipsticks and i know these are a newer fine but they've already become my favorite lipstick of all time are the rem beauty on your collar classic lipsticks they are the skinny lipstick and i do have a video on my channel um reviewing these and swatching them this is in the shade cuddly my favorite out of the two these are the best smelling lipsticks of course check my video if you want like the full tea on this but these are creamy and super pigmented like two swipes and like you're good and these actually wear like a really long time not as much as the bite beauty ones these are out of the three of these these are the longest wearing but these ones, for the finish that it is, these are a satin finish. Even if you do eat, like the way, the way that they fade off is really flattering. And uh, just like the finish of these, make your lips look hydrated, moisturized. Moving on to gloats. Starting off strong with my favorite gloss formula of all time. I know I'm beating a dead horse. Say it with me. Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm. Specifically, the Heat ones. This is my favorite formulation out of all of the ones. But I also really like the plumping sensation. It's like a hot, like cinnamony plumping sensation as opposed to like a minty cooling sensation. And it's not intense at all. And they smell like Jolly Ranchers. Ugh. The gloss balm that I've paired with the By Beauty Chai is in Hot Chocolate Fantasy. So that is the gloss that I'm wearing today. These are so good, like shockingly good, are the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Glosses. I have three shades. I have Sparkling Rosé, Mauve Lady, and Mocha Twist. As you can see, these ones, I I need to get new ones what is not to love about these these are more of like the minty uh plumping sensation they smell they do smell minty very similar to like the mentha um plumping lip glosses from bath and body works if you're familiar with those uh so this is my favorite shade 
in Mocha Twist. So this is Mocha Twist. These wear a really good while, like a good five hours. And even if you eat, like they adhere and cling to your lips really well. These are just it, like such, such, such a good product. And the last gloss, I can't stop wearing this gloss. This is also a drugstore find. You can find this at Ulta. It's by Undone Beauty, and this is the Big Papa Glaus and Peach and Honey. I love the packaging. It's just like big and chunky. I don't know. For some reason, I just love it. And it has like a big doe foot applicator too. Oh, <laughs> it smells like strawberries. This is the only lip gloss that I feel comfortable wearing to moisturize my lips, like for the function of moisturizing my lips. And it feels like so lightweight and smooth and like gel-like. And I love pairing this on top of just my natural lips. Like I just love wearing this on its own because it's so comfortable. It smells so good. The finish is so like super shiny, glouty. And the color isn't really that noticeable. It's just a very light pink tint. Moving on to liquid lipsticks. First one are the REM Beauty On Your Color liquid lipsticks. I have two shades. I've already talked about this in my other video, so I won't go too in depth. They smell just like the classic lipsticks, just like the best vanilla scent you'll ever smell. The packaging is really cute. The colors are cute. And this one is super comfortable. You know that feeling like when you touch your lips together and there's like a little bit of stickiness, like when you go like this, like, like some liquid lipsticks are like really stringy and sticky. This one has slight tackiness to it, but it doesn't, it's not stringy. Like it's not like uncomfortable or like weird. If I eat while wearing this, it just leaves like a light faded like stain look you only need one coat but you can build it up it is buildable next is one that i don't have but i used to be obsessed with these are these smashbox always on long wear matte liquid lipsticks specifically one the orangey one that's called like out loud those are similar to the REM Beauty ones in the way that there is a little bit of tackiness after they've dried down but those ones are more long wearing than these ones like those do not come off like you could have oil on your lips you be eating a burger milkshake whatever it is like those ones do not move and the colors in that range are so beautiful really good formula but my favorite liquid lipstick formula is from about faced and is the painted lip color i only have one shade in so long summer but this formula is the best liquid lipstick formula. So if you are into liquid lipsticks and you find a color in this range, buy it. Like you will not be disappointed. You don't even really need a lip liner with these because the applicator makes it really easy. No, these don't have a, do they have a scent? It's like a slight lemony scent. Yeah, very, very slight. So the applicator is like a pointed doe foot, so it's really easy to get a precise line. These are so thin, like I can feel that I'm wearing lip product, like this lipstick and lip gloss, but when you wear these, you honestly forget that you're wearing lipstick. And last but not least, lip pencils. I'm not gonna talk too much about these ones because I've spoken about them so many times they're my favorite lip pencil of all time is the about face um what are these the about face matte fix lip pencils and i have the shades cradled midnight seduction smoking room and paper romance and there's a bunch of other colors it's like 30 colors really the best thing about these is that they glide on so easily it's like shocking like you barely have to touch the pencil to your lips and they just start moving and they really set and ugh, these are just great to pair with other lip products to make them long wearing and the next two i don't have with me but is the la girl uh what is it la girl perfect precision lip liner the one that i had was uh sugar and spice that's a really nice like darker brown lip liner that one is not creamy 
like the about face ones but it is really long lasting and easy to use like they don't pull they're not uncomfortable not in that way they're just not creamy like these ones are but those are a really good drugstore option and then another drugstore option are the nyx slim lip pencils creamy long lasting lip liners especially the shades um nude and natural are just classic like neutral pink lip liners those ones even more so than the la girl ones are more creamy than the la girl ones uh they definitely glide on um not still can't compare to these but more so than the la girl ones more like the about face ones Whew! okay we're almost done i'm so sorry this video is gonna be like 30 minutes long <laughs> but moving on to mascara and the first one is my favorite mascara of all time it is the rare beauty what are you it's like the rare beauty universal strokes mascara and this is just in the shade black and this one is all around everything that you want in a mascara it doesn't flake it doesn't smudge um i've worn this for literally like 12 hours before and it's never irritated my eyes and honestly i forgot that i was wearing it because it just stays out of your way like if you have sensitive eyes you'll like this and if you have watery eyes like me, you'll like this because it really doesn't irritate you or smudge. It's more like a fiber wand as opposed to the plastic ones, which I prefer. And it's not too big, like you can get in the inner corners. You guys, guess what? I did repurchase it because I think I mentioned it in a previous video maybe that I've been wanting to repurchase the Clump Crusher Mascara by CoverGirl because I used to wear this all the time in high school. This is the best for the lower lash line. This is the only mascara that does not smudge on my lower lash line and that really is saying something because even the Rare Beauty one will transfer and smudge on my lower lash line. That's why I just don't really wear lower lash mascara. But with this one, this is the regular one but the waterproof one as well will be on there for three to five business days. This is what the wand looks like. It is a plastic bristle wand with a banana curve and it's really small. So you can really get in those corners, really get close to the lash line, really long lasting, doesn't smudge. And if you want like a more natural, super separated, no clumps at all kind of look, this is the mascara for you. And last mascara I don't have, but I've gone through like two or three of these before, is the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara in the black tube. That one, even more so than the Rare Beauty one, will give you heck of volume, like super black, super lengthened, super dramatic, like false lash effect. The wand is actually pretty similar to the Rare Beauty one, except it's more of like an hourglass shape and the bristles are a little bit longer. So that one is not as good at getting in the inner corners. And I wouldn't wear this one on the lower lash line. But for the top lashes, if you want a really volumized, dark, black, dramatic effect, Monsieur Big setting sprays. The first two I'm going to talk about I do not have, but I repurchased multiples of them. Specifically, the NYX Dewy Finish Setting Spray. Now, the only reason that I would not use this again is because one of the first ingredients, if not the first ingredient, is alcohol denatured. And I just really don't want to put alcohol on my face. But for the function, for its purpose, to give you a dewy finish and to set your makeup, that one truly is the best one that you will find. Next setting spray is the Milani Make It Last. Wow, wow, wow. As far as the drug score goes, even more so than the next one, the Make It Last one isn't a dewy setting spray. It's just a normal setting spray. It doesn't change the finish of your makeup. But boy, will that last for a good eight to 10 hours, like easily. Again, I probably won't ever use that one again because alcohol denatured is one of the first ingredients. And last but not least, this is my favorite setting spray. And I love the ingredient list. The ingredient list is so plant-based and natural and juicy. And it is the Milk Hydro Grip 
setting spray. This is um, a mini size. Normally it's like this tall. And this comes with 1.69 fluid ounces. This plus the Hydra Grip, like, you might as well just tattoo the makeup on. You might as well just accept that that makeup is going to be your everyday makeup for like a while because those sandwiched around your makeup, like your makeup will look smooth and fresh. It won't have broken up or like disappeared at all. Like this is fantastic. And look at that ingredient list. Like it's impressive. Wow. Oh my gosh. I'm hungry. Like that's how long I've been filming. I really need a snack right now. But if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. Like this video, subscribe, and I'm sending you so much love and light and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.